back for match number four. Unfortunately, we're on the draw again. Um, kind of hard to keep a one lander that has like one one mana play and everything else is two mana plays. This is also one of the things that I like question with Boros sometimes is just the sheer amount of two mana plays can get clunky sometimes. So fortunately, a Mulligan. This hint's better, still a little awkward. Um, I think in this hand I keep the three lands and then these two and bolt. Just put back Seal of Fire here. That's my looking at four, so I'm guessing Dredge or Tron. Generally, most decks don't mull this aggressively. Ogles. Okay, well. Unfortunate. Yep. This is one deck that I wish didn't make a comeback. I'm just gonna bone. Do I bone crusher down here or do I boros charm? Bone crusher at least opens up other. No, not against the field real armor, it doesn't. This is just a pure damage race. Bolt plus stomp is five, six, seven, eight. seeds. Alright, so against Bogles, Searing Blazes go out. Paths and Wear Terrors come in. So obviously you can't count on Path to Exile being particularly effective, but neither with Searing Blaze. Path at least gives you outs to Core Spirit Dancer. Uh, Wear Terror obviously can mess with a little bit of what the opponent has going on. Uh, beyond that, obviously they are a Clear Light of Sanctity deck, so having out your enchantment destruction out is a nice thing. So, let's see what happens here. <laughs> Hand's not the best, but it's not the worst. Um, obviously this hand gets set, shut down pretty hard by seal of fire, or not, by ley line, but I still think we keep.
unfortunately it's going to be hard to race with this hand. a burn there. I think at this stage we're just doing the man efficient thing and gonna hold a bolt in case they have firewalker and land for some reason. I don't think they do but yeah, that's gonna be really rough to try to race. Basically impossible. Unless I find wear tear real soon. Just gonna play Bone Crusher Giant. If anything else, we're dead next turn, so I think our best bet is to just play Bone Crusher. It's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I don't think we can kill him next turn. dead here anyway. Let's again just submit. Rolling Vortex once again. This isn't the best kind of matchup for it, but against Bogles, you know, really you're kind of limited with what your options are, unfortunately. the Bogles player is going to be right back. So now we're in an awkward position, right? So... Honestly, don't know what to do with this hand because obviously this hand has wear tear and Eidolon, both of which are pretty good cards. I think we're gonna keep. Like I said, the hands the hands of ours that are effective in these kind of matchups are kind of limited. So this is the kind of hand that. So potentially win turn one, seal of fire, turn two, idle on. Um, our opponent's keeping a six card hand, that's just really bad for us. thing about seal is we can just play it out preemptively and at some point use it when we need to.
Draws out of their stupid first, I guess. Really? Nice. Wow. Back for match number five. We're on the play, which is nice. Sounds okay. Like, from burn perspective, it's a good hand. Um, but once again, I judge, like, good burn hands as having a one draw creature, but I still think, especially on the play, it's a keep. Opponent is also mulliganing. Oh, 
hopefully we're not up against Dredger. Vocals again. Just hold up Lightning Bolt this turn. Is our opponent has a Mana Dork or something? Nope, we're up against Tron. Alright. This hand is definitely not particularly good against Tron, but... Blast zone is kind of whatever here. It's just like one coil engine here. Serum blazes out, smashes, and potentially wear tears in. Probably want paths. Yes, <laughs> 
<laughs> two smashes, two paths. Do we want wear tire? That's the question mark. I don't know. I don't know. I think on the draw, I'm just going to go with this configuration. Hand's pretty reasonable. We have turn one dork, turn two roiling vortex, or another play. So, the only problem with the goblin guide is, is it like can help undo their mulligan here. Mulligans to three, mulligans to two. Eh. way to get a win but four and one's four and one I guess all right we're back with a quick wrap up with the final couple of matches here as I kind of already did a wrap on the part of they did with the stream so a couple questions have come up about whether bone crusher giants better than rift bolt skewer the critics lightning helix um, why is seal of fire in the deck etc. So, the thing is, when you're signing up to play the card Roiling Vortex, if you're playing it in the main deck like I've been trying it out, you're saying basically that uh, you expect the games to go a little bit longer. Uh, you expect all your cards to extract a little bit more value. You know, you're expecting the 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 game to go to turn five at the very least to make Roiling Vortex a three points of damage. So you kind of got to look at the game a little bit differently. First off, when you're playing Roiling Vortex, you can't really play Rift Bolt. Um, another thing I brought up is the vulnerability Burn has to turn one plays when they're on the draw. You know, opposing Goblin Guides, Soul Scar Mages, Swift Spears. Noble Hierarchs, Arbor Elves, uh, you know, even something like Dark Confidants, uh, you know, there's a lot of cards that, uh, can come down turn one, or if your opponent's on the play turn two, that you don't want to have to spend your turn, your second turn answering if you don't already have a turn one, you know, Swiss Beer or Goblin Guide. So... Seal of Fire is a second one mana play that can answer a one drop. Or even Hexdrinker has been popping up on some black green lists. Uh, one of the things I mentioned I mentioned a couple of times is that Boros of all the burn variants is super clunky. There's not really that many one drop plays. Like if you look at something like uh, Hayashi Obosh here, you know, you have, obviously, this is a 1 and 3 deck, so not as good an example. But you have, um, you know, you have 28 1 drops. Um, if you look at, like, a traditional prowess deck, you're probably looking at 24 to 26 1 drops at the very least. Uh, if you look at something like Rakdos Burn, you're probably looking, because in addition to these, you have something like uh, Bump in the Night. So, one of the, th the power of... Boros is also its drawback. Um, Boros Charm and Lightning Helix add a lot of powerful one mana play or two mana plays to the deck, which in turn drags the co the curve up a little bit. So you're you're more beholden to keep two land, three land, even four land hands because you need to get the spells out of your hand in a timely fashion. So shaving down to more one drops allows you to interact earlier with some of your opponent's stuff and allows you to lower your curve a little bit. Uh, enabling you more to get the spells out of your hand in a like getting stuck on two lands. Uh, 
Bone Crusher Giant is kind of a twofold thing. So, first off, it's card advantage potentially. You, you have a burn spell you can cast and a creature. Um, even if your opponent, you know, just takes a stomp to the face and answers Bone Crusher Giant immediately, it's still taking four damage. So, on the surface, paying five mana for four damage isn't great, but in terms of like card, you know, dealing four damage is pretty good. Another thing is one of the things we learn to as le lose to as burn is our creatures being outmatched on the battlefield. It's a lot easier to outmatch a 2 2 or a 2 3 or all once again a 2 2 than it is a 4 3. Um, a 4 3 can brawl with much bigger creatures. Uh, it's a threat that um, can't be fatal pushed without revolt. Um, so, and. It also meets one of my requisites of playing Burn in that it has to have some type of trigger, some type of ability to make it worthwhile. You know, like Eidolon comes in, its ability is immediately active. Bone Crusher Giant, even if it's answered immediately, hasn't done, like it doesn't get it to attack or block or anything, still deals your opponent 2 damage. So you're still contributing to Burn's overall game plan, even if it's answered immediately. Um, once again, when you're playing Roiling Vortex, and even to a lesser extent Burn in general lately, you need to have in mind that the format has gotten significantly grindier. Um, and if nothing else, the, the utility against decks like Ad Nauseam, Bogles, etc. Like, the, the match that we won against Bogles was... Um, How do I put it? Was both lucky and also skill. You know, being able to blow the opponent out with wear tear, uh, but also still having a, a threat like Bone Crusher Giant to pressure their life total. Um, obviously, they didn't top deck particularly well, and we top decked pretty reasonably for the situation we were in. But overall, I felt like you know we were in a pretty good spot because of the various cards that were in our deck. So, overall, do I think Bone Crusher Giant is better than Rift Bolt, Skewer the Critics, etc.? Under certain circumstances. Um, especially when you're, you're main decking Roiling Vortex over something like Skullcrack, you're saying, I'm expecting to go the turn, the game to go turn 5 or later. And when you're doing that, having a little bit of card advantage in your deck and being able to play a little bit more of control. And the, the individual damage of your cards is a little less relevant because. Roiling Vortex is just a constant source of ticking damage. So, you know, the fact that your Stomp deals two or your Seal of Fire only deals two, a little less relevant because you have another source in your deck that's a constant stream of damage. So, and once again, Bone Crusher Giant can be both a spell for your Monastery Swift Spears and a body later on in the game. So, rest of the deck, uh, Core Firewalkers. You know, we run into at least one red deck a league. Nice card to have. Relic of Progenitus didn't really pop up too much this league, but there's been other met. Well, I guess it did pop up against Uro Piles, but it's a very powerful card to have access to. Um, obviously, it would have been more bad if we would have run into Dredge, but. And then Lava Mancer, once again, this is just kind of a, another thing you'd bring in against non red creature decks that also happens to fill the spot that Loris would have been if we weren't playing Boat and Crusher Giant, so pretty much my long-winded wrap-up for this league so another 4-1 13 and 2 overall with the roiling vortex burn so definitely have, have been running well but also i think some of this build does add some things to things so this has been john for mtg nexus